Hi guys, Adrian from centercourt.com.au. Last day together. Hopefully, if you've had any questions, you've let me know. And remember that, as always, the links are above so you can go back to the previous day if you need to. Now, in the last day, our last video, what happens if you want to get further, go further? So you're enjoying your tennis and you want to see how far you can take it. Now, first off, I should say, I'd never really taken any sort of formalized tennis lessons myself. I taught myself how to play. And that's absolutely a viable, venue, uh, a viable way of you doing it now, more so than when I did it 10 years ago. Uh, when I did it, I had an old school video camera, the one with the little tape. I had to get a special software, plug it into my computer. That software cost $2,000. I didn't have a hitting partner, so I got a ball machine that was probably another two or $3,000. And all I did basically, I would video myself hitting a shot and then I would compare it to, we had these tennis magazines and they were freeze frame photos of professionals hitting their shots. And let's say, I remember on a backhand, there's a Slovak player, who's still playing now, Daniela Hantakova, who's known for her backhand. And I, you know, switch the ball machine on, video my backhand, have a look at it frame by frame, look at what the magazine said, and I would just copy. So that's a completely viable way of doing it. It has the advantage of that mindset training of you're gonna be responsible for yourself. You're not thinking someone else is gonna turn you into a great tennis player. The other thing is, it's much faster to see the correction you need to do yourself and change it than have someone else tell you what they're seeing. So there's a big, think about it, there's a big difference between you seeing yourself and correcting it than having someone else tell you what you need to correct. So I could tell you, for example, hit on the bottom of the ball more or brush over the top a bit more, but that will mean one thing to the coach, it'll mean a different thing to the player. So a lot of, a lot of I can't tell you how many lessons I've seen. It's an hour of the coach repeating the same thing, the same thing, and the student's not getting it because what you say and what I think are completely different. And these days, with a smartphone and YouTube and things like that, learning the way I learn is much easier and much cheaper. So that's a perfectly viable way of doing it. Now, before you go further, I encourage you strongly to think about exactly what you want. Do you want to just get as good as you can, or are you going to chase the dream and become a pro? Or are you just happy to have a hit? Bearing in mind that a lot of people say that and then they get frustrated when they're not brilliant, but if you're not going to put in the practice and the hard yards, it's not going to work. You're not going to become brilliant without dedication. So set out what you want in your head first, and if you're happy to have a hit, just do that. If you want to just get as good as you want to, the starting point is your local tennis club. So in the PDF below, you'll see I've put some links to the local clubs in my area, which is the North Shore of Sydney. You go to the club, often they will ask you to play, they'll see how good you are at playing, and then they'll put you into a comp, a beginning comp, as you get better, those comps might, will become harder, higher in standard. They may include other clubs in the area. Then you might be competing from other people in Australia. Then maybe you'll be playing against people internationally. But you take it as far and as high as you want. But the starting point is the club. If you want to chase the dream and go pro, first off, you've got to be aware the chances are very tiny. Very, very tiny because to make money as a tennis player, professional tennis players are traveling 11 months out of the year. So you have to tr cover at least the travel costs. Then there's a tournament cost, entering a tournament. Then you're probably paying for one of a coach, a physio, a physical trainer, or you know all of them. If you've got your partner traveling with you, you might have to be paying for them. So basically in the top 100, you're barely breaking even. If you're outside of that, Either you've got awesome sponsors or you've got someone funding you or you have a day job or something like that, which is very difficult if you're playing professional tennis and traveling, as I said. To make serious money, you're going to have to break into the top 20. And then obviously there's a few people who are worldwide superstars and their endorsements make them the richest sports people in the world. Tennis um, with Sharapova, Maria Sharapova and with Lina, people like Roger Federer, they are some of, if not the most highest, one of, they're the highest paid sports people in the world. 
but the chances of that, I mean, if you're going into tennis because that's what you want, I would say you probably need to adjust your thinking slightly and think, well, step by step, bearing in mind you want a contingency plan. If you don't get there, bearing in mind an injury, a simple injury could set you back and could end your career. Um, so by all means, if you want to chase the dream, go for it. It takes hard work. The chance of making it are small and you're going to need, you know, the finances somehow. Most children, if they have an eye to becoming pro, also won't be in full-time school. They'll be homeschooled or correspondent schooled or the tennis academy where they're training full-time will have schooling facilities. So the amount of time and graft needed to even have a go at it means you're taking a risk because if you don't make it, then you may not have the university degree, let's say, to fall back on that the other, the other children of that age have managed to achieve. Having said all that, if you just want to get as good as you can, um, as I said many times, centercourt.com.au. My name's Adrian, send me an email. If you're in the local area, I'm obviously happy to have lessons with you on court. If I'm not in your local area, send me an email. We can do coaching calls via Skype or you can upload videos of yourself on YouTube and I can show you, you know, maybe where you're going wrong. More than happy to help. So although this is the end of the video series, I hope this is not the end of the journey. Please feel free to keep emailing me with any questions you might have. And I hope to see you on the court sometime in the near future. Having a go, playing tennis, it's a great sport and you can play it for life. So I certainly hope it serves you well. See you soon, bye-bye.